Yo, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to avoid injury while running or before running or how to basically run a lot without getting injured. Um, because I've been running a lot lately after, you know, saturating my, my mind with David Goggins esque, you know, or David Goggins interviews, watching all his interviews and like becoming obsessed with him, basically, you know, no homo, but, um, I've been running a lot lately, you know, I'll, I'll wake up in the morning. I didn't run today. I, I only did 900 kettlebell swings today. Uh, but most days I will get up and I will run eight miles and that, you know, I've done it so many times over the past month that eight miles to me feels like, it's like, I should probably step it up a little bit, like eight miles. And that's, I, I would never run eight miles on a regular basis. Like if somebody forced me to run five miles, maybe I would, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, fine. Maybe last year when I was in uh, Tel Aviv, I was running like, I was running 8K maybe. That's not eight miles, but not like I've never run before. But anyway, the point is that now I've like really upped it because I've kind of just decided that I can really is what it comes down to. You know, you watch David Goggins, you realize this guy pushes himself way harder than anybody that I know personally and that I even know of really. Um, so it just kind of makes you think like, oh, well, if he's pushing himself that hard, then I can probably push myself harder than I'm pushing myself now. And then eventually what happens is you, you know, you do four miles, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. And then you pick a high average to do consistently. Okay. So anyway, the point is this, is that I've been running a lot lately, injury free, no injuries to speak of. Yeah, sure. Sometimes, you know, my feet hurt a little bit, but like, you know, whatever you're running for eight miles on concrete, it's going to happen. So anyway, here are my tips for running and uh, not getting injured. Tip number one, get good shoes. So buy running shoes for sure. Um, you know, I think, I think actually that I'm, I'm pretty lucky genetically that I don't have weak knees. I, I've never really had knee pain before. I've, I've injured my knee when I, the first time I went to Thailand, I hyperextended it because of some stupid ass trainer. Um, but that was an injury and that was resolved within three weeks. Uh, even when I was in the army, you know, I'm carrying heavy packs all the time and marching in boots, which are not really that good for your feet or your knees, never really had any issues. So to be fair, I think a, a good part of it is genetics. I think some people just have weaker knees. Wasn't me. So anyway, the point is that you need to have good shoes, right? So currently my running shoes are Adidas Ultra Boost. Um, they are not the best running shoes that I've ever had. I recommend that you buy actual running shoes. Like you go to the shoe store, Nike, Adidas, whatever your cup of tea is, and you go to like the specific running shoe section and you buy a pair of running shoes. These Ultra Boost are not running shoes. I think they're cross trainers. And I originally bought them to wear at work because, you know, I work at the mall, I'm on my feet all day. and. You know, you need to wear comfortable shoes, otherwise your feet are going to feel really bad at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, I made the mistake of buying all white shoes and they got really dirty really fast. So I was like, all right, I guess I won't wear them to work anymore. I'll just wear them to work out. And they became my de facto running and workout shoes. They're very good. Probably the most comfortable pair of shoes that I own, despite the fact that if given the choice, I would choose actual running shoes over these because they're just a little bit more comfortable. The reason I recommend actual running shoes or, or shoes that are specifically designed to run in is that, you know, these are billion dollar companies, Adidas, Nike, I don't know, those are kind of the top two. These are billion dollar companies that put a lot of money into researching how to make the best shoe to run in. Um, for people who run really long distances and run a lot. So, you know, in this case, I would trust their research because they put a lot of money into it and obviously they want to make a high quality product so that people continue to buy their shoes okay so highly recommend um i think the adidas ones are called cloud form or something or they've got the cloud form insole or something like that and they're very light also running shoes that's another thing about running shoes is that they're very light um so that when you're taking you know a step <clears throat> you're able to maintain good form when you run um as far <coughs> oh my <coughs> oh my god I just had some pistachios. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. The second thing, uh, let's talk about form. So if you are having knee issues, 
um, I think it's very important to try to run on your toes. So, um, you know, if this is your foot, right, this is your foot, most people, and I used to run like this too, most people will go heel toe, right? Heel, land, land on your heel and then on your toe. And it'll kind of do this like, it's not like boom, boom, but it's like heel and then kind of rolling onto the toe. And that is okay, I guess. I think it's very important to pay to, to try and land softly um, and not just like flop your feet around, right? Because when you think about it, um, running is a very high impact activity. You know, it's thought of like, it's in the fitness world, we call it like high impact cardio, even though it's not, you know, you're not like punching anything, but those constant steps are, I guess it's, it's called high impact. I don't know why. I, compared to like swimming, for example, where there's really no impact or low impact, I guess you could call it. Um, so anyway, because it's so high impact, you want to make sure that you are uh, reducing the impact as much as possible. So regarding the form, if you are going to run heel toe, when you, um, you know, when you land on your heel, try and land softly and try and begin the roll immediately, right? So it's not like boom, boom. It's like heel and then immediately you start <clears throat> that kind of roll onto your toe. Now, what I would recommend is that eventually you transition into running on your toes. <clears throat> and the way to do that is that, in, you know, if this is your foot again, you just kind of stay on your toes for the most part, right? Not on your like tippy toes, but you just kind of like your heel doesn't really touch the ground. So you're kind of instead of, um, I never really thought about explaining this, but instead of running where it's like, you know, you're doing like the roll like this. <laughs> so, so weird, but like you get what I'm saying, right? Instead of running like that, it becomes more like, like this, right? Like, you, you take a step and then you're, you step with your toe and then instead of putting the rest of your foot on the ground, you keep your foot up like this and then you just go with the next one. So instead of, um, your, your feet just kind of go forward more as opposed to stepping like this as they would, you know, you're, you're going to get more, um, you're going to get higher off the ground when you do heel toe as opposed to toe toe or running on your toes. So anyway, the point is that when you run on your toes, um, you allow for a lot more, um, um, it's like more of a shock absorber, I guess. Uh, that's not the best way of explaining it. There's less impact when you run on your toes as opposed to running on your heels. Because when you run on your heels, there's no, you know, the, the heel takes the brunt of the impact, which I guess you could say that's what your heel is for, which is why it's shaped the way that it is. But I think that if you're having, you know, you can definitely, I, I think it's, um, it's much more likely to lead to injury if you run strictly on your heels only. Now, the issue with running only on your toes is that it's going you're going to fatigue your legs much quicker by running on your toes. So if you're running for sufficient distances, then it's possible that you're going to need to alternate between running on your toes and running, you know, going heel toe, which is what I do when I run. So when I start running, what I'll do is I'll start on my toes, right? I'll just kind of go on my toes until my legs get fatigued a little bit which now I've kind of, I've built up a fair amount of stamina in my legs from running so much, but still, you know, takes me, I don't know if I do a 10 minute mile, which is really slow, you know, let's say nine or 10 minute mile. Um, it's going to take me a good hour, you know, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half to run those eight miles in the morning. So like, I'm going to get fatigued and I've never actually kept track of this, but I, I do know that I switch between running on my toes and, and going heel toe. So what I try to do is I'll, I'll run on my toes and then when I start to get really fatigued, I'll switch to heel toe. All right, so that's the point. Okay, so the third thing would be, I don't know, honestly, oh, well, okay, what's the third thing? I guess the third thing would be to not run on concrete. Um, ever since I was in the army, um, I wake up pretty much every day and my feet hurt, really. It's like, it, they just hurt, you know? I'm not sure why. Even even on days where I'm not running, like even on days where I'm not working in the mall fucking nine hours a day on my feet, um, I wake up in the morning and my feet still hurt. I'm not really sure why. I don't know if I have like permanent damage to my feet or something. But even when I'm not running, my feet still hurt. In, you know, in the morning when I wake up. After I'm like up and moving around, they don't really hurt anymore. Uh, 
But anyway, the point is that if you're running on concrete, they're really going to hurt. Now, the the thing with running is that when you run, you know, running is very accessible, right? You have shoes, you have like somewhere you can go outside, you can run basically. You know, it's cold outside, wear a sweatshirt. It's hot outside, like take your shirt off. You know what I mean? It, it's a very accessible form of fitness. Um, now, the downside to that is that it's possible and likely that you're going to be running on concrete, concrete, which is a very hard surface. So the issue of like impact is going to be also, you know, it's going to be an issue, especially if you're not running on your toes. If you're running, you know, if you're not doing any of this other stuff, you're running, you know, you're doing heel toe and you're running on concrete, it's probably going to hurt a lot more. So um, what I would say, if possible, try and find a track to run on, um, you know, like a quarter mile track, I guess. And that's that's if you really have a problem. Uh, just basically find find a surface to run on that is not concrete, right? So tracks are a good option. If running on a track is very boring to you, running on sand is amazing. When I lived in Tel Aviv, you know, there would be a, like I would, I would run on the beach because it's really fun to do, you know, people watching and beautiful weather and the sun, you know, you go at like sunset, it's, it's just amazing over there. Um, but the, the issue is that like the beach only goes for so long and then eventually you have to run on concrete a little bit. But I noticed that when I would do my runs on the sand, like sand plus concrete would be way better than just concrete. So Sand is also a good choice if you live near the beach. And if you live on a, if you live near a beach, like when I lived in um, Thailand, uh, you know, like when I was living in Phuket, there was a stretch of beach that was like three miles. So over there, it was easy for me to just like run up and down the beach because I could run as long as I wanted. And I, you know, I go up and back one time, an hour has passed and my knees are, you know, and my ankles really are, are okay. And the soles of my feet, everything's fine. Um, so try and run on uh, something that's not concrete. Grass, I don't know. Do you do you live somewhere where there's like a bunch of grass that you can run on? Maybe I, I don't know. Like a, a park, you're just gonna like run through the park a couple times. I guess there are those things. There, there's parks like that somewhere, but um, most parks have concrete walkways. So you know, and the parks that don't have concrete walkways are probably not flat. It's probably like you're running on dirt or something. And I just feel like it'd be more likely that you're gonna slip and fall and, or, or trip over something. Um, so basically either run on a track or run on sand or good choices. So yeah, that's basically it. If you're having issues, you know, if you have like joint issues, there's supplements you could take for your joints. Um, I recently ordered pomegranate extract and I, you know, if you guys ever watch my videos, you, you'll see that I do stuff like this a lot and I'll like crack my hands and, and rotate my wrists like that. Um, so occasionally what, what will happen with me is that I'll, I'll be sleeping and, you know, I'll sleep on my side and my wrist will get like really twisted like that and it'll hurt, you know, the, the joints in my wrist will hurt for, you know, two weeks before the pain actually goes away and it's a, it's a real problem because, you know, if, if you're doing kettlebells, if you're trying to work out with weights, it's hard, you know, you, you need your hands and you need your wrists. So like if you're having pain in your wrist, there's a lot of stuff you can't do. Um, but anyway, I started taking pomegranate extract and, you know, I, I had this pain in my wrist because I did what I just mentioned, how I slept funny. And I had this pain in my wrist for almost two weeks and it, it wasn't going away. I was trying stretching. I was trying changing my diet. I was trying like not working out with, you know, my hands or doing lighter weight. Nothing seemed to be working. And then as soon as I started taking the pomegranate extract, you know, it's been maybe four days and I can, I can move my wrist, you know, like this is, this is the difference in mobility, right? This wrist is fine. And then this one, this, this hurts a little bit and I can't really go all the way down. Um, but that's, that's, you know, before it was like, I could go like this and then it was, it was really bad pain. Um, so anyway, pomegranate extract is really good, I found. And then, you know, for if you've got like serious injuries or if you get chronically injured, then I'm a really big fan of MK677. That is like the ultimate healing uh, supplement for me. Although pomegranate extract is coming in a very close second and it's much cheaper and much more easily accessible. So yeah, that's like if you're already getting injured, I guess is the best way to put it. So anyway, those are my tips on running and how to not get injured while running. So if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.